So I guarantee you guys have probably browsed around Barnes & Noble here and there, probably looked at some manga, looked at some Marvel, some really f***ing overpriced anime box sets, and stumbled upon this. What is this? Look at this. This looks like some cursed dark web shit. However, don't be alarmed, I guarantee it's not that bad. But it's still fucking weird. Drip Drip was created by Paru Itagaki, the daughter of fellow mangaka Kisake Itagaki, who is the creator of the original Baki the Grappler, while Paru herself is most well known for creating the Beastars manga. Yeah, the creator of one of the most obscure mangas out there is responsible for one of the best Netflix anime. Okay, let me break down this chick's mindset. How do you go from a big, brolic gray wolf wanting to go down on a rabbit to nosebleeds during sex? So this little known nightmare is about a young woman named Higari Mako. And what's her deal? Well, she gets a massive nosebleed whenever she comes into contact with anything dirty. Sound goofy enough? Well, of course, by that extension, she's a hardcore germaphobe, to the point where simply kissing somebody is enough for her to go carry all over them. Because of this, she's a virgin, and she wants to find a partner. Yeah, it's complicated. There's not really a clever way to go about this, so... You're bleeding! You're bleeding! Diving directly in, we learn that Mako works for a very well-sterilized food containment factory. Factory. So yeah, she's pretty comfortable with her work environment. While she works, her co-workers are remarking about how Mako is hopping on dick like it's World War II, and they want to enlist. So this chump decides to board that plane and set sail to the harbors, only to be faced with the Allied forces. Yeah, she tops this dude and gets off on the details of how he cleans himself. Upon surprise mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact, she roshis all over him. It's here we learn of the shtick of Mako's character. She's very sensitive to filthiness on a bacterial level, with her body reacting in a massive nose hemorrhage, to the point where she has experienced near death. Now, I personally wouldn't know this, of course, but since human intercourse is not exactly the most sanitary of events, the romance cuts off after drinks. And this dude is just like, yo, bitch, you crazy. I ain't fucking no crazy. I mean, can we really blame her? She just wants to be a normal human being with normal relationships with normal people. However, threatening to pour boiling water on a man's junk won't exactly get you a second date. Punch me, I bleed. Going into chapter two, she withdraws some cash and disinfects literally every bill she has, as all money is filthy. It's a metaphor for capitalism. Okay, it's not that deep. It's just more germ stuff. But since she plans on spending every penny she made, she'll have herself a fancy night with a bank teller who showed her some attention. She uses this as a chance to try and be normal, live a normal life with normal adventures, without having to suffer from any crippling physical impairments. Until exactly that. Is this... Blood? With her next journey, she explores the deeper world of romance. To try and understand the deeper execution of love, she turns to action movies, where the main characters go through all the drama and struggles to form that romantic bond. And that's why she imprisoned herself in an innocent schmuck walking by. It's the result that counts. However, while setting this up, we learn an even deeper drawback to her nosebleeds. If there was any dishonesty in the relationship, like in this case, where even though this event caused him to have feelings for her, it was an event falsified by herself. So... Chapter 4 is actually a really well done chapter in terms of character building and serious tone. This chapter focuses more on her emotional turmoil with how her body reacts, especially how those around her have looked at her with just like shock and dismay all her life. But then she runs into this guy who works in a field that collects blood. So lucky grab for her, right? Well, she learns that she wants more than just a physical relationship. She wants to actually fall in love and get married. And it just so happens that this man is incapable of obtaining those feelings. So things just simply don't work out. Nothing more than character and story dynamic. This is definitely the best chapter in the story. But then we get right back into crazy with chapter 5, where Mako has apparently become an urban legend known as the Dripping Woman. After some harassment at a local bar, things get... extreme. However, we soon find out that the very kind owner is someone that she went to school with and has a major crush on her. And because of that, he's someone she'd like to further pursue. Are those blood-filled drinks? Throughout the story, we've gotten key flashbacks to why Mako acts this way. The beginning of chapter 6 officially seals the deal. Apparently, her father was a whore-hopping he-demon who ruined the relationship between her and her mother, causing her mother to rid their home of all the things filthy that he left behind, and teaching Mako that all physical contact is bad unless it's with your soulmate. That's some serious Ed Gain shit right there. So Mako and this guy, who's name is Tokuma, spend the day warming up to each other and making sure that he understands what she's all about, and that he could very possibly be the one to finally rid her of this anomaly. He punched out all my blood! So after spending the whole day together and suffering no symptoms from physical contact, they boom. Finally, after all this time and internal struggle, she finds the one she can be with. No more struggles, no more awkward moments, a normal, functioning relationship. 
Wait. Oh. Turns out this dude is a dirty sleazeball who charms women for his own benefits. And Mako's nose can sense that. Due to his dishonesty, her nosebleeds come back. Not surprising considering he has a history of cheating, a gambling addiction, debt within the millions, and domestic abuse charges. Jesus. However, Charlie Sheen over here is not exactly in his prime, and he needs a home base to handle his debauchery. So, he proposes. We appear to have run out of jokes. The wedding is fast arriving, and this dude is not doing too great. He may be a scumbag, but he's not an idiot. He can see the bad things to come should he pursue this endeavor. But he's just all, nah, man, no chick can resist the Tokuma charm. However, he would instead be faced with quite possibly the greatest backfire since Makoto himself. She bleeds all over her dress, and it draws every crow in the city, leading to a panicked-filled confession, which she takes remarkably well. She'll just move on, no problem. She'll continue her journey to find her soulmate. And that was the one-off manga Drip Drip, one of the most cursed things I've ever seen sold in stores. And I love it. <laughs> this book is great. It's stupid, but I love it. It's clear, it's concise, Mako is a fun character, her adventures are crazy, her feelings are understanding, albeit a bit nutty, and of course, it's short and sweet. I recommend you guys grab this. There's plenty I didn't mention to help keep things condensed, and if you're a heavy manga collector, I think this is a must. Overall rating, 9 pints out of 10. So, yeah, I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time. Peace out, everybody. That clock keeps ticking like a metronome And my thoughts keep telling me to get me home And my balls keep telling me to let me home Oh, just let me home